Yes, uh, broken news. Very insightful uh, series, I must say. Uh, how much homework did you really do for this one? <laughs> I think quite a lot. We have been doing homework for like uh, I mean all our lives, I guess, especially last uh, fifteen years. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but yes, I mean to answer your question, uh, extensive research, uh, meeting a lot of people in person, and. Uh, uh, reading a lot about them as well and uh, visiting uh, the studios, uh, visiting uh, news editors, producers, uh, on ground reporters. Uh, so, yeah, extensive uh, research. Um, but I think it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, for your central characters, did you have any particular journalists in mind? Uh, most, most, uh, I mean, depictions of journalists tend to be fashioned after one person. I won't name him, uh, but you, you resisted the temptation of doing that. Am I correct? See, um, obviously there are inspirations, and as you know, you don't want to name them. I was going, to name them. but I guess um, it's not um, a particular character by the end of it. You know, I mean, like maybe that could have been the starting point. Um, it's amalgamation of a lot of characters whom we have seen uh, in, in the uh, news media, uh, 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 English uh, news media. Um, but I guess uh, the intention is not even like, you know, I mean, like make a caricature of someone, mm -hmm. you know. I guess uh, uh, what you want to do, what you want to definitely do is address a larger issue. Um, and uh, inspire people to introspect a little bit like you know and when i'm talking about introspection is not just by the uh by the media world you know i mean introspection by the society at large you know uh because i guess the way uh, uh our uh, media has become and the way our uh, political system has become uh mm -hmm. i think it's um uh, we as a society are responsible for it, you know, so we can't be just pointing fingers at uh, someone saying that you did this and you didn't do that. Uh, I guess as a society, uh, we have failed uh, to be uh, as democratic as uh, we should be and uh, owning up our responsibilities and um, uh, working on them. So unless we do that, uh, I don't think anything else will change. Uh, so it's it, it's more of like, you know, uh, slowing down and understanding our responsibilities rather than like, you know, pointing fingers at people. And that can happen at at a, at a, at a society level and at an individual level as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so in fact, one of the biggest strengths of the series is that it does not caricaturize at all. Even when it shows, you know, uh, some of the characters like Rihanna and others, you know, there's there's no caricaturization at all. So that was that was conscious, right? Yes, it was conscious because see, what I mean, uh, the the idea is not to make fun of someone. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if you can go a little deeper than that and understand that uh, why they are the way they are, mm -hmm. uh, and they are also like us. Uh, they are. Uh, they also have. Uh, um, similar personal lives uh, and they're also dealing with the same issues which we do as an individual. Uh, and uh, unless you understand them, um, you won't uh, uh, you won't go beyond and think that why they are the way they are. Like, you know, the moment you make them caricaturist, you will sort of, like, you know, you will maybe laugh at them, but... Um, yeah. It won't help. It won't right. help, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, so that was the intention, and that was very that that way. I think that was a, um, a it was a conscious choice, but I guess that is also a natural extension of how maybe uh, uh, our writer Sambit Mishra and me uh, we think as well. So I guess uh, um, out of the whatever like you know four shows which I have directed, basically, I guess this is. Uh, uh, way closer to our hearts than mm. that one. I mean, like, and uh, because this has got something which which we believe in, you know. So I'm very happy that we got a chance to work on something like this. So this is an adaptation of 
adaptation of a uh, BBC show, Press. Um, Sorry. Is it? It is an adaptation of a BBC it, it, show. Yes, yes, yes. It is an adaptation of BBC show. The thing is, the season one uh, is mm. uh, um, Press had only one season. Uh, mm. So uh, it was very. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you how it started. Uh, so, uh, someone from BBC got in touch with me. Uh, uh, a girl called Ria called me randomly one day saying that, okay, we have this series uh, which you want to adapt to Indian world and G5 is uh, interested in making it. Uh, so, I said, can you just send me the episode to watch? And you know, I'm like, it was a six part series, uh, season one. Uh, and I started watching it and I felt that it's so, so, so. Uh, uh, to uh, even in our world, you know, I mean, like it just like it resonated so well. Uh, uh, what was happening in their world was what's happening in our world, basically. And I was very happy to know that someone wants to talk about these things in our world because the mm. natural tendency is like you know just to sweep it under the carpet and let's not talk about it. It doesn't exist, you know. So I was very happy that someone wanted to do that, and that was that was my first connect, uh, emotional connect with the series. Uh, that was about season one. Season two, uh, I mean, the press original didn't have season two. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I was saying that, you know, it's like emotionally, it was, uh, it is very, very, very close to our art because, like, it's, it's the story from our world, uh, original story from our mm -hmm. world, basically, and something which uh, uh, the issues are, like, you know, so close to. Uh, our heart. So uh, that's why this has got like more reflection of us than uh, the the other work which I've done. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's so much more. And, and 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 very uh, of course so the series also strikes a very balanced note. But you've been brave enough to you know mention some of the some of the burning issues like electro bonds etc. <laughs> so you 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 were thinking that you were you know putting your neck out there when you did that. <laughs> We felt that it need uh, they need to be spoken about, okay. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I'll I'll mind you that um, see, electoral bonds became sort of like you know more talked about thing in last three months, right? The series was made actually before that. Uh, the series was okay. made, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, like we we finished shooting the series last, I guess, uh, June or July. Okay, mm. so uh, it, it's not something which is like we want it to be topical and that's why we got this basically. We want, we we, uh, we had this as part of our series always. Uh, it just like became very, very talked about recently. Mm. So that's why people are sort of speaking about that. So almost ahead of time, prophetic huh? in a way. I mean, yeah, that's what we keep... Uh, <laughs> blaming our writer that you know uh, what is it you keep saying things and that's it. like even if you go back to season one and if you just look at some names uh, of some characters political characters politicians and then you'll understand that what 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 was happening what happened in the series uh, got played out in Maharashtra mm -hmm. politics a few days later including the names so you're like okay and like yeah that's how it is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, going back to BBC Studios, uh, when you, uh, how much of an advantage it is when you have a ready format with you, uh, and how much of uh, how how high and how stifling it would be uh, in the sense of that, if you have to work within that format. Uh, I think uh, I'll tell you about like the way they operate. So they have a format. Uh, they have formats of like uh, all the shows and things. But they're not rigid about it. So format okay. works as a, as a basic framework. But you're allowed to change anything and everything about it. You know? So mm -hmm. it becomes a very organic process. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, that way, it's very uh, liberating and refreshing as well. Like, you know, you're not bound by the structure. Like, you know... If you look at the original uh, press, uh, six, mm -hmm. six part uh, series. This one was the eight part series. Uh, so we, we uh, sort of deviated a lot from the original material, but still we were very true to the, and very honest to the original material as well. So in terms of the soul of it, basically, we were always true to it. Uh, 
बट वी हैव टू चेंज इट एंड अडेप्ट इट टू अवर वर्ल्ड टू अवर रियालिटी यू नो एंड देवर अब्सुलटली ओके विद दैट uh so it was uh, g- i mean i quite enjoyed uh, working on uh, on the mm. season one as well i started with being a format because they we treated like an original uh, um adaptation of a story basically is how we treated it obviously mm. it was uh, an official remake of press and uh, uh the the credit uh, to the original writing days mm. and like you know we give them full credit for the developing a show like that and becoming the guiding light uh, so yeah but it was you know the best part is because they were not really uh, uh, that really helped but are, are you a fan of the franchise model how important it is for every successful series to have a sequel and and whether now it will have a season 3 i mean uh, no every successful series should not have a, a subsequent season uh, because uh, Some like stories are like meant to be only like a limited series of six episodes or eight episodes. Uh, if you if one tries to apply it, apply a formula to it, and especially mm-hmm. because something is successful, then it doesn't work. Uh, I guess a lot of people have been also telling me that that have very few series in India, especially where the mm-hmm. season twos have been better than season one. You know, they are uh, almost exactly. none. Ah, uh, yeah. uh mm-hmm. and people have told me that but uh, broken news does justice to the season one and goes few steps ahead so we are very happy to know that uh mm-hmm. but yeah there shouldn't be any formula like that some stories obviously and whether they are imagine whether you know i mean uh, if there is a natural progression or mm-hmm. like you know if you develop like a very uh, uh, like a super you know season 2 then only one should go ahead uh, with that and i guess um Mm, lot of other cases what happens basically people go ahead with season 2 just out of compulsion no pressure mm-hmm. of success or like you know because like the platform wants it that way you know because we have invested in the uh mm-hmm. character so much or we have invested so much money in season 1 mm-hmm. and build the world with basically we have to be content but uh, that is not how that is not uh, what one should do uh, i don't think uh, that's a good idea This is the only season two which I've done. I haven't made uh, season two of any of our movies. My films. I mean, I haven't directed. And I guess we are the only dead in things. I mean, the world is I very exciting to us. Three. Yes, yes, yes. You see, I mean, the world is very exciting to us, very close to our heart. Uh, but I guess, as you know, I mean, that the decision uh, right now we are just like you know, uh, we are just enjoying the the success the and the reviews and the uh, the reactions. uh but when we regroup and obviously as you know the platform and the production house will have a lot more well, to yeah. say about this mm-hmm. uh, uh but we are excited about the world uh, let's see how it goes once we regroup if they are also equally excited uh then uh, i mean we don't mind it uh, but um, uh, we are often talk of the box office pressure on the makers on the directors and others what would you say are the pressures in the in this ott space where of course you know there are no box office figures but then how how do you measure uh, success and i guess i don't i see i don't know i don't know the numbers really i mean like you know and it's not even my job to even think about the numbers i shouldn't be actually you know what i mean what i can do is like making a, a, a most um, honest and at the same time entertaining um series right that is what is in my um, that is what in mm. that is what my expertise is and that is what uh, uh mm. partially under my control right so i should be just focusing on that promoting it marketing it like whatever the numbers which you get basically these are the things which are definitely beyond my control right and like if i keep thinking about those things i think i should i will be compromising uh, what i am supposed to do so you know i need to look inward and like you know at least do things which i can be doing right uh, and, and you know the best part about uh, ott space is uh, it doesn't have a box office pressure rather not box office it doesn't have a weekend pressure like you know uh, you have to make so much of business in first three days and this has to happen and that has to happen so now Uh, i guess 
uh, people uh, when like you no know, look at it uh, the quality works actually you no know? uh, if if uh, mm. you have a, a good series a good OTT film which you have made this week it will be there for people to watch it's not like you know as you know otherwise like you no know, still recent times basically in feature film uh, marketing is to happen such a way that first three days let's just record the cost and you know then it doesn't matter whether the film is good or bad like you know just like you know just market it well you know uh, in like high ticket rates for the first three days and like you know you have this much of recovery good thing is for ott it's not that case you know i mean like you know it will be there uh, for at least 10 15 years for people mm-hmm. to watch it and uh, word of mouth if it has a very strong word of mouth uh, people will come in and watch i guess so i i'm happy that i don't have to deal with that pressure yet of the weekend pressure but by your your filmography i mean you you've done a lot of varied work you know uh, arnaya the test case i mean all these series belong of course there's there are thrillers at some level but uh, otherwise you know there's a lot of variety in your choice of uh, work uh, again by you know it, are you are you conscious of this or it so happens no i guess um it just uh, instinctive choices which are made i don't think there's any design uh, behind that i mean i guess i work more like you know whatever excites me at that point of time uh, i just go ahead with that uh, and i guess also um, uh, the variety actually works for me emotionally better like you know i was just talking to someone and like you know even when i worked as an assistant director i worked on assistant director for almost like i guess 17 years uh, i didn't work with uh, uh, with the same director twice okay. so either i was very ba- I, either i was very bad at my job and nobody hired me for the second time or uh, but i mean in my head at least the reason is basically once you work with one director you understand the way the director functions you know i mean like uh, the novelty of it and the excitement of it you figured it out right and then it, the process is not exciting then at least either you go with like biases that you know what this person will react like that and like you know you start preempting that and you start losing the excitement of exploring something so in a similar way i guess exploring different genres uh, is, is something which is uh, i think it 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 works for me so different genres are actually better rather than Okay. Like dealing with like one so set of. You said that you don't work with the, the same director twice, more than twice. Um. So, so were you able to figure out Rajkumar Hirani, and uh, how would you rate him as a director, even otherwise? <laughs> oh, he's a very successful director. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the films have been really heartbreaking, especially both the Munna Bai's uh, three just as well. Uh, yes. But like first Munna Bai was actually actually. like my most uh, favorite film uh, and i mean he's a very very uh, very very hard working director very honest towards his craft and mm-hmm. takes his work very 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 seriously uh, and success hasn't corrupted him uh, you know so mm-hmm. i think that's very very important uh, having the, the honesty towards and commitment towards your work is something which i mean i'll always uh, uh get inspired uh uh within like you know looking at him but what would you say is your idol in the film industry uh no i won't say that <laughs> you won't say that who is <laughs> if there is any <laughs> uh there are two people i uh, really i mean i've learned a lot and uh not just as a craft as a as a as a work ethic as well there is one person which is amir khan uh, that too mm-hmm. i worked with him on quite a few films actually three uh, three four three films um, so i learned so much from him and mm-hmm. it's like my club uh, i i i won't be able to explain it the perfectionist that we uh, with that i mean uh, yeah i mean like you know i mean like the thing about him the thing about him is like you know uh, uh, um, the film which is making is the most important thing uh, 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 you know than anything else at that point of time like you know so that kind of commitment towards 
work and that energy once you bring that energy with yourself like you know entire crew gets that energy and the cast gets that energy and like you know i mean like just that reflects in your work so one is amesan the other one is uh, binod pradhan i don't know if you are aware of him he is a very famous dc in india uh, mm-hmm. he has shot films like uh, parinda uh, 1942 love story uh, uh, rangde basanti mission kashmir and I mean, I worked with him on a film called Bhag Mil Ka Bhag. Um, such a talented person, such a talented person. Like, uh, I mean, I, I've been telling people that where I stop thinking, that's where his thought process starts, actually. So there's so much to learn. And there are like, you know, I mean, if you look at his body of work, like, you know, being relevant um, for 35 years, 40 years in an industry, more than 40 years, I think, which is like quite something. So these two people, I have, I mean, obviously i learned from a lot of people i uh, learned a lot yeah. from raju irani as well but these two people i guess i consider them as like my guru i can say so <laughs> and talking of your casting choices uh, two heroes of 90s have made their digital debuts in your projects am i correct so uh, sonali did uh, debut Hello? in about uh, yes yes Tell me, sorry. Casting choices. What is it? What? And uh, Ravi. Ravi Nair. I said yes. Uh, no. Any, any, any. Yeah. Uh, any particular fascination for actresses of nineties? <laughs> I mean, they are just great actresses. I guess that's a good enough reason. Mm-hmm. And they were, uh, mm-hmm. they were, they were happy to work with me. Uh, comparatively, a newcomer. So. Uh, and uh, i'm i'm really happy that i got a chance to work with uh, both of them you know the uh, the schooling from where they come like you know the, the commitment and the honesty towards work and uh, the discipline and like you know it's like they are like very senior actors right i mean like they are they have like you know, 25 30 years of uh, experience which they carry with them um, but no hang up and like you know no 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 Sorry, Dan Jones. Nothing like you know, just like you know, there for uh, uh, for the uh, for the project for the for the for the work they are doing. Uh, which is like, I guess, uh, I think we can learn a lot from like you know, like the new generation can learn a lot from them in terms of the kind of discipline which they carry with them. So I guess uh, I'm really happy that I got a chance to work with uh, uh, Ravina and Sonali both. I'm really happy. So, would you would you say they are they more more spontaneous, more instinctive kind of actresses, as against the method actor that we are so used to using the term? Method <laughs> <laughs> acting is like something which is like I think over a bit uh, term, and I think most of the time it also works. Uh, if you take it too seriously, then it works against you actually. Uh, instinctive mm-hmm. actor needs to be instinctive. You know, I mean that's what I believe. uh so yes they are um, they go by their instinct but also because of like so much experience they have learned uh, you know uh, uh, so much you know that also really uh, works and uh, um, the discipline uh, the schooling which they have been part of you know that really helps that really helps so uh, yeah, i mean Uh, nothing, nothing good or bad. Like you know, I mean, like method acting is so good, no problem. As long as like it's been done um, with certain <laughs> uh, in a in a regiment and like more uh, restrained way, then yeah, it's fine. It's no problem. But what what does having an actor like Jadip Alavas you know on board mean? What more you can ask for? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's such a fabulous actor. Like you know, I mean, like. Uh, Uh, it's so instinctive you and you talk about instinctive it's so instinctive like you know uh, and it comes very naturally he doesn't have to like you know consciously sit and think about it oh now what do I, what am i going to do you know i mean like it's just like you know he uh, he'll take it all in and when he brings it out like you know you just like you know he just takes the the same material basically you know miles ahead so uh, i mean like fabulous fabulous experience was it was like it was uh, so much fun because like uh, when you get surprised 
on set by the performance like you know you expected ke okay it will go only here and when the actor takes it like you know few steps ahead uh that really that becomes that's the fun of it right mm-hmm. that's the fun yeah. of it right? that's what you that's what we work for i mean like if you are like you know we i mean if i knew that okay scene will go here and it just went there when i'm coming back home that evening i'm like oh okay there is no excitement but when the mm-hmm. actor takes it like you know few steps ahead and like you know big thing like a few more layers to the whole scene mm-hmm. that that really works that really helps also uh, but talking about your personal life your wife ronmay is a is a writer right yes yes so is is she i mean uh, is she writing anything for you no she's not writing anything for me um, and that's again a conscious choice because uh, uh, see mm-hmm. any creative process uh it is full of differences and a difference of opinion and confrontations and uh lot of other things so uh i don't uh think it's very advisable unless like you know it's a script which is which is like she has made it ready and she just handing it over to a director like me uh then i think it will be uh, it will be easy uh uh of feel to But otherwise uh i mean i think we are better as husband and wife and uh, we give feedback to each other's work like you know whatever i'm doing basically so i would always narrate to her and whatever she has written she'll always narrate to me and like we will talk about it discuss it uh, sure. but at the moment uh, we are not uh, working together on any project okay. you you don't believe a couple that works together stays together <laughs> On the I'm contrary, the... <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to take a chance. I, I think it's not worth taking that chance. <laughs> so on on the feedback meter, how which would which work of hers would you rate as the best, and which one of yours she rates the best? Um, uh, I mean, I like uh, Scoop a lot. Actually, uh, yeah. I think it was. Was very very nuanced and very very refined uh, work. Uh, in terms of my work, uh, she liked season two quite a lot. I mean, like you know, she was very very happy and was then. Um, but I think she uh, the one which she liked the most is my first series actually, test case. Uh, there's a series called Test Case which I've directed. Very well, yeah. With, yeah. with Nimrat. Uh, so yeah. I guess because that's been my first. it is as well like mm-hmm. you know so you sort of uh it's everything is first time right so uh yeah. so she felt uh that is my best work and i should uh, i i need to uh, i need to go beyond that is what she keeps telling me so let's see but, but since you, since scoop also dealt with the world of journalism uh, did you share notes with her while uh, uh, the broken news was happening no or, no, or, no no or, no or no Uh, not at all. You are saying, huh? You didn't share. No, notes. no, no, not at all. I mean, obviously, obviously, see, obviously, she like, she would talk about it, what she is doing, or I will talk about what I am doing. But I don't think we exchanged notes for this, you know. Uh, and uh, they are like, you know, they are talking about a similar world, but they are still very, very different world. They, they, they it's talking about a particular case uh, okay. for uh, her series, mm-hmm. and it's more about the film journalism, and they're like, you know, hardcore rivalry, and there's a criminal conspiracy behind it, and all that. Uh, our series was dealing with other issues and more, uh, more like what today than what happened then. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but they are similar world, and there are like you know for no for some reason people keep uh, comparing it to when they use. So okay, I mean like yeah, all publicity is good publicity. But in in OTT space, do you think it's essential to go the thriller route? I mean, why are thrillers? I mean, like the go-to genre, always invariably. I mean, I guess what happens is basically there is a you know very stronger tool for for the engagement of people because uh, the control uh, of watching is in their hands. It's not like uh, feature films viewing where people are already bought the ticket and they are committed to two and a half hours. 
so you yeah. have to have a uh, have a little more stronger little stronger engagement of the mm. audience so that uh, they um, they sustain you know so i guess that is one reason why uh, thriller is thriller becomes a little more um, uh, the hook becomes stronger so i guess that's the reason maybe why we mm. do have that uh, sort of uh think going but but do you think ott is i mean is as compared to cinema uh, a level playing field for of course for actors we have been saying that but for directors too now that now that very big ones are entering the fray <laughs> yeah and uh, see it's a, it's a level playing field actually like people uh, who are not supposed to be the big ones actually has got advantage because what happens is basically big ones are doing a series in between two feature films you know so that is mm. not the the uh, the most important thing which happen in their life you know most of the time i i would there will be expect, uh, exception but most of the time that's like something which is i mean someone is making a because the feature film dates have got pushed let's just make a web series you know so uh, versus the people who are doing hardcore making hardcore web series like, like primarily the, that's what they're doing you know for them that is the most important thing in terms of their career so uh, i mean i'm not uh, i'm not worried about uh, it being level field playing field you know yeah I, mean, i would rather focus on what i am doing okay. how does it matter what someone else is doing what others are doing okay right yeah. but but your your mother in law was like reema lagu a famous actress you know who has so many parts your wife is a writer now you're you're a noted director but how how do you see yourself you know and look back at your journey as that of an insider or of an outsider i'm an outsider an outsider but it doesn't really matter insider or outsider it doesn't really matter they i mean i'm outsider because no one from my family was part of the film Uh, when i came in basically but uh, it uh, it didn't bother me uh, it uh, i mean you know as like just to become part of it initially like you know getting a first job as an intern or ad basically that that becomes a little difficult or easy but i guess it's better that it it doesn't become easy if you if you don't know anybody uh, because if you can pass that step that battle if you show commitment at that stage the rest of it is comparatively it just keeps becoming easier so uh, i uh, man whatever this nepotism talk which goes on basically i don't believe in it i never faced it uh, and what what really people people really uh, uh, care for uh, how serious you are how honest you are towards your work and how sincerely you are doing it uh, i have got a chance to work on the best of the films of uh, my times Be that like you know three years or dangle or bhag mil ka bhag or gajni aladdin like so many of them basically so uh, I guess people uh, the only thing which people uh, um, people care is basically how good you are at your job you know is there someone else who can do it better than you at the cost which they are offering you basically then they will go for that person you know? so uh, I guess yeah yeah it's it's uh, Talent uh, plus economics. Talent Sorry? plus. I said it's talent plus economics that matter. Yes, yes, that's what matters. Actually. And talent a lot actually. Like you know, I mean, like if you if you if you want to work for half the price, ah, uh, uh, I'm developing a couple of series which will. I'm hoping that they'll go into production post monsoon, but they're with two different platforms. And right now we are at a very early stage, so I can't really name them, but they're good. I mean, good series, good platform. Happy mm. that uh, I'm busy. Yeah. Mm. Okay. La- last question, but do you think a certain kind of fatigue has set in uh, on the OTT space? Also, I mean, you you using the word excitement a lot. Do you think it's still that exciting a space uh, as it when it when it you know caught our imog- imagination? Uh. I wouldn't say forty, but uh, it's like because like you know when it came up, basically there was like like initially there was it was really slow, and then suddenly you now I mean like there's so many things which are getting made. So I guess certain amount of consolidation is happening, and mm-hmm. the number of uh, uh, series which are getting made uh, is 
lesser than what they were maybe three years back uh, or during like you know pandemic like you know like everybody went back to OTT. Uh, but I guess that is not a bad thing. I guess you know rather than making hundred series and not even having like you know five of them which are like you know worth watching, it's better that we make only twenty or thirty. Uh, but we make like really quality stuff which gets watched. Uh, all over the world so i think that's what we should be working towards so quality not quantity is i guess the mantra mm-hmm. to go for i guess and especially since we are competing with the international uh, series as well yeah 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 and like you know i mean like you get uh, only few chances right i mean like you uh, if you don't prove uh, when you are getting those chances basically like people will like you know you're in the international market will start looking at you like Achha, no, no, nothing really great comes out of the market so I guess it's okay we make uh, a few series rather than so many uh, but quality stuff and I'm sure we are doing that actually I mean there is there are some series I don't want to name them they're very okay. good and when I look at them when I watch them I feel like yeah why did I make this mm-hmm. one so yeah there are there are there are talented okay. people <laughs> Okay, th- thank you so much for your time, Mr. Vekul. A pleasure talking thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. And a great pleasure watching your series as well. <laughs> thank you so much. And looking forward to more work from you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.